The five most common problems I see when DIYers work with electrical metal boxes. Let's get into it. Number one, not securing the box or a cover. So your electrical boxes, whether plastic or metal, but metal is far superior, far stronger, will last longer, and you definitely want metal if you're installing something heavy like a ceiling fan. But they are required to be fastened, so they have to be screwed down and fastened to wood framing. Um, so remember to screw your boxes down and also never forget cover plates are absolutely required. Don't skip that step. Securing your box and or putting a cover. After the box is secure and you're done with your work, always remember to use a cover plate. It's absolutely required for safety. And your wires coming out of your electrical boxes to the framing, say you're in an attic or a basement or crawl space, they are required to be secured down. So you want it within a couple inches of all your boxes, do all the wires all the way around. Number two, the next most common mistake I see DIY wires making is leaving the wires exposed. And if you look at this connector here, this is a snap-on connector. I see exposed copper wires on the hot side of the electrical. So this is a metal box. So if anything touches that, it will become energized. The entire box will become energized. The cover plate will become energized. It could arc, it could start a house fire, it could electrocute somebody. So all sorts of problems come with that. So when you're stripping your wires back, do not leave any exposed wire. You want the wire insulation all the way into your fastener of choice. Number three, not using a ground screw. So with metal boxes, you have to ground it to the box. Now here we have the grounds all bonded together and that's great. However, you are required to have it bonded to the metal box. Now on this metal box, it gives you that funny little bump out shape. That bump out is for a grounding screw. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get bare copper wire and you can just cut it out of your existing Romex. Use your wire cutter to put a little twist on there. Close that up slightly. And with your copper wire and your ground screw, you're simply going to screw it into the bottom of the box. Now you can buy pre-assembled grounding screws with wires already attached. And the benefit of those is the, the screw is already on and they are already uh, insulated. With your ground screw and wire safely and snugly attached to the box so you're nice and safe. Number four, the most common defect with new do-it-yourselfers is mixing different wire types. If you look carefully on the demonstration box, we have different wire types. The yellow Romex wire is uh, 12 gauge, larger, and the white Romex wire is 14 gauge, smaller. You cannot mix different wire sizes in a box. They must be the same matching sizes. Remember that there's a lot of reasons for safety that that has to be matchy matchy. And number one, forgetting to use a strain relief clamp. This is what a strain relief clamp looks like. So if you have a Romex electrical wire into a metal box, you can see you have a sharp edge there. That wire could get cut over time. There's nothing to provide strain relief if you step on the wire. If it gets pulled for some reason. It's going to create a shock hazard, an arc, or a fire. So some kind of strain relief clamps are required. This is what they look like. Let me show you how easy they are to put in. They do make plastic versions of these. They're not as good. I would encourage you, if you're working with a metal box, go ahead and use the legit solid metal strain relief clamps. Okay, so you have your metal box. If you look carefully, you have your knockouts. There's different sizes. This is the most common size. Let me show you how easy this is. There's no reason to skip it. You literally just take a screwdriver and something firm and just give it a little whack. And look at that. It's popped loose. That's all it takes. Klein pliers or any pliers for electrical, just pop that right out. It will twist right out. No intimidation factor there. And then you have your strain relief clamp. You actually can pre-install it on the electrical wire if you want, but this is how I typically do it. So the threaded side with the screws will go first. So large side on the outside into the box and then simply thread on, can you see it there? You're gonna thread on this clamp to tighten it up. You definitely want your screws pointed up here so they're nice and accessible. To tighten that clamp, you can take a screwdriver and just push down on those little prongs. You can even just give it a little whack with your pliers. What I typically do is hold this back slightly, 
hold the ring with my screwdriver and just see if I can give it a nice tight twist. And we are good to go. That's nice and solid. Okay, with the clamp in place, you're simply going to take your, your Romex wire. Now, it likely won't be stripped yet at this point. It'll likely be something like this at this point if it's a brand new wire, and you're just going to feed it into your box. At this point, you might want to give it about 12 inches or so. You're going to cut that back at some point. Okay, now just tighten that on back down. This will make a solid connection that will last a lifetime. This is the way you want to do it. And now you're good to go to strip back that wire insulation and get ready for your fasteners. This is called a 4x4 gang box. It is used for two duplex receptacle outlets or two switches. Okay, the five most common mistakes the DIYers make with electrical boxes. Recap. Number one, not securing the box or a cover plate. Number two, leaving exposed wires. Don't leave anything exposed that can short and arc out onto that metal box. Number three, not using a ground screw. That bump out in your metal box is made for grounding. Number four, mixing different wire types and sizes. Use the same wire in a junction box. And number one, forgetting to use strain relief clamps. This is what they look like. You should be using them on all boxes. Hey, I bet you can do it, guys. Good luck. I bet you can do it yourself.